Hi everyone, welcome back to Achieve More. Today we are going to learn how to use Notion. With Notion, you can capture thoughts, you can manage projects, you can publish website, you could even run an entire business. You can use it for your personal use or your small or large businesses. We are going to start with the absolute basic of how you even just add a page and how you can work with blogs. And then we will advance to working with database and collaborating with others. Although those may sound complex, Notion makes them really easy and I promise by the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to use Notion. Alright, let's dive in. To get the Notion, you need to write on the search bar Notion and click on this first link. This drops us on the Notion homepage and here we have see these two options. Get Notion free and request a demo. Scrolling down and you can see how Notion is helping businesses and individuals to achieve their goals. Okay, so now I'll go up and click on this get Notion for free and that's the plan that I'll be using in this video today. The free plan offer all core functionality but there are two big limitations. First, you can only upload file up to 5 megabytes in size. So let's say you want to add maybe an image to your workplace, you just have to make sure that it's 5 megabytes or smaller. Also you can only collaborate with up to 5 people. So if you are a small business and you have more people you are working with, you will probably need one of the other plans. But once again the free plan has most of what we need. After clicking on that button, this now drops us on the sign up screen and you can sign in with an email address, a google account or an apple account. I will sign up with my gmail id. I will go through and do this. I have now entered all of my information and I will click continue. Here we have a choice to make. Do you want to use it with a team or for myself or for school? I want to use it for myself so I will click on it. Just because we choose this one, don't feel like you are logged in. Later on you can always upgrade to one of the pro plans but for now let's go with this one. This now drops us into the main notion interface. And although it may look simple, you will be surprised by how powerful it is. Okay, I want to start by just giving you an overview of the interface that we see here. Over on the left hand side, this area is referred to as the sidebar. And this is what we will use to navigate through your workspace. At the very top of the sidebar, here you will see your workspace name. And when I click on that, here we see the workspace name again. I'll click out of that. You can also customize whether you see the sidebar. Here I can click on this icon. When I hover over, you also see the shortcut key. I can click on that and that minimize the sidebar. So now I just focus on the content. Here I could click on this menu again and that brings the sidebar back. I could also hover over the edge and here I could give it more space or I could give it less space. So I can customize what that looks like. And here in the sidebar, you are going to use this to navigate throughout your workspace and right here you see all of the pages and all of the databases that make up your workspace. Here for instance, I am currently on the getting started page. That's the one highlighted and over here in the editor window, here I could see the content of that page all right here. We have talked about the interface a little bit now, but I also need to get work done of course. So I want to add a new page to track locations for, um, let's say I am the owner of the smart store and it's a grocery store and it's located in various countries around the world. To add a new page, over in the sidebar there's an option called templates and when I click on this, I can look through all of these different templates that I can add and it's worth take a look to see if maybe one of these templates already does what you need. But I'll exit out of that. Down in the bottom left hand corner here I could just add a blank new page and I could start from scratch. Alternatively I could also click on add a new page and that does the exact same thing. And one thing you will find using Notion is there are many ways to do the same thing. I'll click on add a page. This has now inserted a new page and right here in the sidebar you see the new page and it's currently called untitled. To give this page a name I can click on the three dots and here I could rename it or I could simply click onto the page and here I could type in a name. I'll call this the smart store locations. I can also customize what this page looks like. When I hover over the title here you will see these different options appear. And here I can add an icon, I'll click on that and 
and here it just throws in a default icon but this doesn't really relate to my smart store but i could insert an emoji i could select from different icons i could also upload my own image but i think emojis should work let's see if they have a cart emoji and yes they do that one looks good and i'll select that one of the benefit of adding an icon over on the left hand side where i see all of my pages here I see an icon and this helps me more quickly identify the page. Right up here I can also add a cover. I'll click on that and here too it also throws in just a random image. But once again this does not match my grocery store. I'll click on change cover and here I can choose from colors, gradients and images. I could also upload my own image and here I could also link to an image. And they also have something called unsplash. These are basically stock images. Here too, I'll type in grocery store and uh, let's see what they have. So they have pretty good images of grocery stores. This one looks pretty good. I'll select that and click out of that. So here I have my cover image and these fruits are looking so juicy and fresh, right? Well, moving on, I could also click on reposition and here I could drag it up or down to get it in the perfect place. But I think this looks good. I'll click on save and I have now customized what my page looks like. Down below I see all these different links that I can use to help me get started with this page. So here you could insert a template or you could start with a database table and later on we will get into what these are. But for now I just want to start with a very simple page. So I'll simply click here and I'll start typing in. We are going to use this page to track our retail locations for the smart store now that i have entered some text just like in any other word processing application here i could highlight some of the text and when highlighting it i get this contextual menu so here i can make it bold or here i can click on this drop down and maybe i apply some brown color to this text so i can format what this text looks like also over on the right hand side I have this three dot menu that exposes even more options. But for now I think this looks good. When I hover over this line of the text that I added, over on the left hand side you will see there's a plus icon and there are also six dots. This line of text that I inserted this is referred to as a block and this page will be made up of many different blocks. Over on the left hand side, I'll click on the plus icon and this shows all of the different type of blocks that you can insert onto your page. The first initial line of text that I inserted is just a simple text block. And here we see some of the basic blocks. So I could insert a to-do list, a heading, a table, a bulleted list, an image and the list goes on and on. As I go down, you can see all of the different rich type of blocks that you can insert onto a page. You could even insert media, videos, audio, you can even embed different type of content. So you have lot of different options when it comes to blocks. Now I want to just keep it simple. So I will select heading 1 and here that insert a heading 1 and I will type in current locations. Here I want to insert an image of all the current locations. So just like I did to insert this block, I'll go over to the left hand side, click on the plus icon and I can scroll down and find image. But alternatively, and this is a little bit quicker, I can simply type in image and that filter this list of all of the different block options. And here I'll select image and I could upload an image, I could enter in a link or I could select that stock image again. But this time I will click on upload. Here's my image. I will select this and then click on open. This has now uploaded all of our current locations to this page. As I hover over all of these different items on the page, you will see that I have the same plus icon with the six dots. So every item here is a block. Once again, you compose a page with many different blocks. Now up to this point to add a block, we have been clicking on this plus icon. But an even easier way, here I'll go down and I can also type in the forward slash character. Here I will type in a forward slash and that also expose the menu. It's a little bit quicker to do that and here I can simply type in heading 1 and then hit enter and that insert the heading 1. So you can make it really quick to add new blocks. So for this heading, I will type in proposed locations and that looks good. Under the proposed locations, I want to add a bullet list. 
of all of the location that we are planning and opening here i could type in a forward slash and this shows me all of the different blocks when i scroll down a little bit here's the option for a bulleted list i could click on that but don't you feel that was quite a few clicks just for a bulleted list here i will delete that instead i can type in a hyphen and then a space and that also insert a bulleted list that was a lot quicker learning shortcuts can really help you save time here when i move around the page in the bottom right hand corner you will see the question mark icon when you click on this you can click on keyboard shortcuts this page shows you all of the different keyboard shortcuts available within notion here at the top you will see some of the most popular ones that will save you a lot of time and as you scroll down you will see that there are many different shortcuts so it's well worth some time learning some of these keyboard shortcuts okay so now i have inserted a list of all of the different cities where we are planning an opening location but on second thought here i can highlight all of these different block and then i can click on the six dot icon and when i click on that there's the option to turn into when i hover over that i can change this block type into any of these other block types and i want it to be a to-do list i will select this option and that swaps it out for that other block type to add all of these different blocks we have been clicking on the plus icon we have been using the forward slash but you can also just drag and drop media from your computer directly onto the page now with this page down at the bottom we have all of these different proposed retail locations and this is highly sensitive information we certainly wouldn't want our competitors to get their hands on this so i should probably include some information for our employees not to share this here i'll take an image from my computer and i'll drag it down here just letting everyone know that this is a top secret i think this image will be very effective but it might make more sense to show at the very top of the page and it's good that it's pretty easy to move blocks around here i can select this block and here i see the six dot icon i can press and hold and uh, i can drag this to a new position now when i drag it you see this blue line appear and that indicates where it will place this block now one nice thing is you can also move it over to the right hand side if you want to make another column and place it alongside another blocks here i could also move it to the left hand side now i think probably the most effective position is right here near the top i will release it and place it right there that way people see the warning and then here you see all the sensitive information to move this block we use the six dots and then we dragged it around but you can also select a block and then you can use shortcut keys i love those shortcut keys because once again they help you save so much time you can press ctrl shift down arrow to move it down a block or ctrl shift up arrow to move it up a block it just makes it quicker to move things around your page this page is coming along nicely but i think it's almost too much information on just one page I have proposed locations and current locations so I would rather split up some of this content over on the left hand side I can add a sub page here I will hover over this page with the uh, smart store locations I can click on this plus icon and this allows me to add another page here I will type in current locations and then I'll click over to the side and here I see my main page and now I see a sub page here I could click into that and here I see my sub page. I will go back to the page that we have been working with on and uh, here I will delete current locations and I will take this map. I will press control X to cut it and then I'll go back to current locations, hit enter and here I can paste the map of all of our locations. When I go back to the main page and I scroll down at the very bottom, I see there is a link to current locations. When I click on this, this brings me to the current location sub page. To navigate around here, I could click here. I could click here to jump between these different pages or up on top. I also have these breadcrumbs that allow me to navigate back. So here I'm in that sub page current locations, but here I could click to the top level again and that brings me back to the main page. I think it also makes sense to move all of the proposed location to their own page. I could go through the same flow. I could click on the plus icon and I could add another page, but instead I could also click on this block. I will click on the six dot icon and here the option to turn it into a page. So I could turn it into a page. 
right here i can turn it into a page within the smart store locations i will click on that and here that's automatically added a new page over on the left hand side in the sidebar with proposed locations there i see all of them i will click back into the main page now i also want to move all of these different locations here i will highlight all of these different blocks and here too i will click on the six dots and uh, i have the option to move to i will select that and i want to move it to proposed locations i will type in proposed locations and uh, here i see the page that i just created i will select that and that moves over all of these blocks into proposed locations and here i see them again in notion there are many different ways to accomplish the same task now that i have multiple pages over on the left hand side i can reorder these so i really want to see current locations ahead of proposed locations here i can press and hold and i could drag this on top of proposed locations here i could also select the entire page group I will select this and I can move this all the way up to the top and here I can move this all the way to the top on top of getting started and here I see the locations at the very top of the list. Now especially as you start getting really large number of pages it might become hard to get back to the ones that you care about the most. With this page selected in the top right hand corner I can click on this star icon and this adds this page as a favorite. Over in the sidebar you will see that it added a new category called favorites and here i see all of my smart store location informations also upon the top bar to the right of the favorite icon i can click on the three dot menu and when i click on that i can adjust the style of my page so here i could adjust the font look and feel i could also adjust the size of the text I can make it smaller larger i could also have it take the full width or not the full width you have other options as well here i could even lock the page so this way when people come in they can't actually modify the content of the page that might be helpful for now i will click on the three dots and let me unlock the page so i can make edits to this over on the left hand side let's click into the proposed locations and here again i see all the cities where we want to open up a location but this doesn't really tell me that much for example what is the anticipated opening date what will the location look like some of those type of questions what is the status and i don't get that from just a to do list so i want a much more detailed view and i think a database might help me with this i will type in the forward slash and here i will type in database and here we have all types of databases that we can insert and i just want a simple full page database i will select this option and later on we will see how you can start with the database and uh, then you can convert the view of the database into all of, of these other types so let's select full page for now and check that out we now have a new database that's how easy it is to make your own database over on the left hand side let's expand proposed location and here we see the new database is basically a sub page of proposed locations and right up here i can type in a name for this database i will type in detailed view of proposed locations and although data mist might sound somewhat horrific it's really just a simple table with lots of information in it and i want to use this database or this table to track all of the different locations we are planning and opening at this smart store so to start off i need to give these different columns name here i will click into this column and instead of name i will call this city over here instead of tags let me change this to the anticipated opening date for the anticipated opening date i will click on type and let me change this to type date over here i could also add additional columns i will click on this plus icon and i also want to add the status so how far are we along at opening this location I will select status and when I select that here I can see these different status not started in progress or done that will be really helpful as we track these different projects I will close out this side pane lastly I will add one additional column for files this way we can share a picture of the location I will click on this plus icon and here there's the option for files and media so you can add all of these different type of properties to your database whether it's text numbers uh, multi select 
I already added dates. Especially when you are collaborating, you could add other people. So well worth looking through this list to see all of the different type that you can add. Here I will select files and media and this looks good. I will close this out. My database is starting to take a shape. But I need to add some of the cities where we want to open locations. So I will go through and fill out some of the information. I have now added some details to this table and one thing you might be wondering is well what is the difference between just a standard table and a database I mean you could store all of the same information just directly in a table well let's take a look at what some of these differences are when I hover over New York here you will see that I have the option to open additional details or a side peek let's click on that that opens up a pen over on the right hand side or the side peek with New York and as I hover over the title here you will see that I can add an icon I can add a cover so this is just another page with details right on top I can see the properties or the columns related to this location and down below I can build an entire page related to this one specific store so within a database you can store all sort of information related to each one of these records in your database here I'll minimize the side panel Along with being able to add more details related to each record within your database, down below you can also add calculations. Here I will click on this and let's say I want a count of all of the new location we are planning and opening. Right here I can click on count all and this adds a count to the bottom of that column. Over here under the anticipated opening date. Here too I will click on calculate and here I could add the earliest date. So now we have got the earliest opening date. Under this column, I could also click on calculate and maybe I want a percent per group. So let's see what percent is already done. Here I will click on complete and here I can see the percentage. With databases, you can also filter and sort your data. Here I'll click on the anticipated opening date column and when I click on that, I have the option to sort and I can also filter the data. I can also access filters right up here and uh, I can also access my sorting options. To the right of filter and sort, I can also search against my database. When I click on this, let's say I just want to see my Toronto location, I could type that in and that filter down this database table to just that store. It's that easy. I will close that. To the right, I also have the three dots. And here I have some additional settings that I can configure. The beautiful thing about using a database is that you can visualize your data in different ways. All of the underlying data stays the same, but you just get different views on it. Over on the left hand side, let's click on this plus icon. This opens up a pop up over on the side where I can decide what type of view I want to add. And you have different options here. Now I already have a table view. That's the initial view here. But for this new view, I can add another one. So here let's select the board view. I think that looks interesting. Down below I can configure various settings related to this view. Here I will click into groups by and over here let's click into this. And I want to group by the current status. I will select that and then close this out. So here I can see my board view. It shows all the location that we are opening up and the current status. Now we have made some progress on Toronto and uh, it's now all done. Here I can click on that card and here I can drag it over into done. If I go back to the table view up above, here I can see that Toronto has now updated. So the underlying data is the same across all views. This flexibility allows you to choose the most suitable representation for your data depending on your needs and preferences. Up on top, I can click on the plus icon again and I can add yet another view to my data. So here I will select the calendar view and then I will click done. Here I will close this out and here I have my standard calendar. But one of the interesting thing now is I can view all of the different stores are opening in a calendar view. So once again all of the underlying data is the same. The only difference is how I view all of this data. And if I make any changes here that will tie back to those other views. Here too I can also click into one of the stores and that opens up all of the page details. So database are so powerful and you can contain so much data and view that data in different ways. To get back to any of the other views, here I can simply scroll all the way back up to the top and here I can jump between the different views. 
but also over on the left hand side in the sidebar here i can expand this section and i see all of these pages with all of the different views so here I have my table, my board, my calendar. It's really quick and easy to navigate back to all of these different views. I hope you see by going through this that database are so powerful and have so much more functionality than just your standard table. As you are working with Notion, you may have the need to bring additional data into Notion. Luckily, Notion makes that really easy. Over on the left hand side, let's click on import. This opens up a dialog. And here you can see all of the different type of data that you can import directly into Notion. So you have Evernote, Trello, Asana and all of these other services. Now here at the smart store, I want to add all of our grocery store information into this Notion workspace. Here I'll click on Word and here I have my grocery store items document. I will select this and here it's uploading it. Once it finished importing over on the left hand side, I have a new page called my grocery store items and here i see my word document has been imported entirely into notion so now i can do all of my work just in one workplace the one thing to note if i make any update to this document here within notion this won't go back and affect the original source document now that i have all the delivery option entered into notion i just realized that with the upcoming location i should probably add in the address information I can navigate back to the database over here on the left hand side using the sidebar but up on top in the control panel i also have the option to search when i hover over search you will see that the shortcut key is Control k i will click on search and here i want to add details to the toronto location i will type that in and right here i see the best match for toronto here i can click on that and that brings me to that direct page within the database that was a really quick way to get back. Down below, I will click into the page and here I will enter the forward slash and I want to add the address location. And maybe it would be nice to include a map. Here I will type in map and here you can see that you can also embed content directly into your page. And I have the option to embed a Google map. I will select this and here it asks me to type in a URL. I will enter the URL of the location and then click on embed map. And here we now see a map of the location where we are opening our store. This is exactly what I wanted. Adding the map was pretty easy, but I don't want to have to do it for every single city. Maybe I could pull in one of my coworker and have them help me. So I want to share one of my page and all of the sub pages. Here I will select this top level page and in the right top corner, I can click on share. When I share this, it will share this page along with all of the sub pages. Here I'll click on share and right here I can type in an email address for people who I want to share it with. I don't have any email addresses here at the moment because I'm just building up my workspace but I will definitely share this with my coworkers, and that would be so easy. Now what if you want to share the current location with all of your customers so they can know where they can shop our grocery and they want to know our brand new locations. I will select this page and in the top right hand corner. I will click on share again but instead of typing in a specific person or an email id right here we have the option to publish this page this allow me to publish the page as a website i will check this and right here i see the website url i will click on the copy web link down below i can also set various permissions for this page now i don't want customer to come in and edit this i also don't want them to comment so so I will make sure I leave this as it is. I have now navigated to this page and look at that. Customer can now see all of our different locations on a map. We might have to work on providing a little more detail because this isn't really that specific, but at least they know that there are location in their country. Well, that was a quick look at how you can get started using Notion. And I think you will agree with me that it's an incredibly powerful tool that also happened to be very simple to use. To watch more video like this one, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in my next video.